If you enjoy this episode of the Workflows Photography Podcast, hit that subscribe or follow button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast player you are listening from. I do like to scout the location prior to the session. I want to make mm. sure that it's accessible. I want to make sure that I actually like it, that I have yeah. kind of like the best spots. So like we're not wasting time. Workflows is a podcast about saving you time and money in your photography business. As a photographer and content creator who struggles with dyslexia, color blindness, introversion, and anxiety stemming from years of being bullied as a child, Workflows have been my rock. I have workflows for every aspect of my life. And that's why I'm so happy to bring you Workflows, a podcast presented by Imagine. As a company dedicated to saving you time and money in your photography business, it makes sense to enhance and expand the conversation to all things Workflows. Tune in and subscribe to hear stories, strategies, and tools that could be your rock. Hear from people just like you. Put the camera down for a little, connect the headphones, and get to work with Workflows. Get in on the conversation by joining the Imagine community today. Imagine the possibilities. Carolina Guzik is a wedding and family photographer from Miami, Florida, and she loves to work with awesome people. Carolina is married to her husband, Christopher, and they have a bulldog named MacArthur. She's a yogaholic, a fan of Game of Thrones, gifts, ice cream, and traveling. Carolina has a degree in mass communications and advertising, which has served her well in her photography business. She created the Tog Republic podcast because she wanted to share her knowledge of marketing strategies with other photographers. Now, we are delighted to have Carolina on Workflows to share her Workflows insights with you. Here is my friend, Carolina Guzik. Hello, Carolina. Hello, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm good, and you? Good, good, good. So this is going to be a fun conversation because I feel like, how often do you get interviewed as like a photographer instead of a podcaster? Like, is it often these days? Well, yes, because like the, mo the majority of times I get interviewed for like photography podcasts. So even though I'm a podcaster, mm -hmm. I get interviewed as a photographer. Good, good. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad because I feel like... Sometimes that line gets pulled in opposite directions. So I'm glad that, that you, you get to, to bring it back whenever you're a guest. And that's what we're going to do today. Great. And we're going to be talking about a topic, of course, that I know that you enjoy talking about as well, which is workflows. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the theme of the show. Like and it. so we're going to get right into the first question. It's the same question I ask every guest on the show. Okay. What is one, one thing that you do for the photographic process behind the camera that has saved you time? Hold on, because I might not understand this question completely. What do you yeah. mean like behind the sure. camera? Do you mean like when I am photographing or when I yeah. get home? When you're photographing. Wow, <laughs> this interview yeah. is going south already. I don't have much of a, I mean, other than, you know, making sure that my camera is, you know, sync with my, you know, second photographer, other than making sure that I'm on the right date, the right time, other mm. than that, I don't have much of a process. I mean, I do have for weddings, a timeline that I create for my, for my couples, like a photography timeline. So that keeps mm -hmm. me a structure, but I think that, right. I mean... <clears throat> I think I think that would that would be a process, you know, making sure that I have a timeline. Yeah. I am very type A, so even though I'm creative, my brain needs to be really organized. Yeah, I yeah. need to know yeah, what's no, gonna happen. Sense. I mean, and obviously at a wedding, there is things that you know are unpredictable, and you know things might run late. But I do like to have some kind of like a structure. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, having having uh, that in place, I, I I like to do that as well, even if I have got. Like a lot of my stuff are, are, are a lot of my, sh my sessions are either families or engagement or proposal sessions. And they're pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of like, you know, which family members do you want to photograph in what order? What makes the most sense? And then have that on your phone or whatever or memorize it depending on how big or small it is. <laughs> I then, do. I, yeah, I have so. to say also, now that you mentioned this, I do like to scout the location prior to the session. 
I want to make mm. sure that it's accessible. I want to make sure that I actually like it, that I have yeah. kind of like the best spots. So like we're not wasting time. Also, I live in Miami, which is extremely hot. So like I don't mm-hmm. make my clients walk for no reason because then I know we're all right. going to suffer. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, I do the same thing with my proposals. That's like heavily, heavily scouted and re- in person sometimes and also using multiple apps and services and stuff because that's like a once in a lifetime you can't screw it up I, you know what that's what i don't like like i don't do i don't photograph proposals at all like mm. i don't have the patience i don't want to pretend to be kind of like a like a person walking you know by the couple mm-hmm. so they don't know that is me yeah. so, and i'm always concerned about like what if you miss the cue like what would happen so props to all of you that do proposals so well <laughs> thank you yeah i i i do enjoy the 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 high pressure situation. I mean, it's it's a short period of time, but it's it's fun for me at least. So okay, so having that in place, that that's really good. Of course, let's move into business. What is one thing that you do for the business that has saved you either time or money? There are a lot of things that have saved me time and money. I'm, mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm in a podcast, you know, that is run by Imagine. So obviously, shout out to all of you because, you know, uh-huh. outsourcing my editing has obviously saved me tons yeah. of time that now so, I can focus on other things in my business. So yeah, that would be so we're Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to get to editing, I think, next. Mm-hmm. Is there any other areas that... that run my that, images through, so like to be called through another AI, mm-hmm. you know, company. So that has also mm-hmm. helped me a lot. And again, I don't take that many clients. I take about, you know, 25 good weddings per year. I know, you know, that I will meet my financial goals, but then that allows me to, you know, have a little bit of time. So like, I don't have to get so overwhelmed in the post, you know, shooting per se, you know, like a lot of people take so many clients and then they get really overwhelmed because they come home and they're like between the editing, the, you know, delivering images, it's like a lot. So I tried also to pace myself. I know money is good, but also after all, you know, my, my health is more important. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You also mentioned AI calling. Yes. I do want to mention that Imagine announced AI calling and that is coming soon. So anybody listening who's interested in signing up, just go to imagineai.com slash calling and you can fill out the form and be notified when the beta is available to try. There you go. Yeah, I got, got to that little bit of that little plug in there for, <laughs> for, for Imagine, of course. Yeah, you know, I, I talked to, to Charmy Pena two episodes back and she also has cut down on the volume of weddings she's taking, which has actually increased her business because now she's being pickier. She can charge more, make it more of a, of a luxury Absolutely. wedding photography, photographer than, than just another wedding photographer. So that, that may not work for every single person, especially on, depending on your location, but it could work for many, many photographers. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think the experience that I give my clients now got better. And actually, this is kind of like one of my selling points. I said, I only take 20 mm-hmm. couples per year. I want to give my couples my absolute best. So yeah. when somebody, you know, is inquiring or they, you know, feel like moving forward, they know, I mean, they feel like very exclusive, right? They're like, oh, mm-hmm. we for sure can count on her. And I even say like, hey, I'm not a wedding planner, nor I want to be. That's not my job. There is amazing, talented people out there. But I do have knowledge of the industry. These are couples that are their first weddings, right? They don't know anything. So like if they shoot me an email asking me for any recommendation, if I reply within 24 hours, that looks really, really good, right? Because they feel seen, they feel heard. So like that has helped me, you know, a lot with referrals. And again, clients, I feel like, it is has been my experience where clients feel taken care of. I don't know. They become more generous. So obviously right. my upsells are really good. <laughs> upsells. Yes. Speaking of upsells, mm-hmm. there's a lot of photographers that are actually doing an upsell for faster turnaround times thanks to what Imagine has done for them with their editing. So... What is one thing that you do for editing that has saved you time? (laughs) Well, obviously, (laughs) imagine, and you did mention about this upsell. And for a second, I thought about it. I'm like, this is going to be so, so good. But then I was like, "Mm, I'm going to hold on this for a moment. Because I also, even though imagine is like so good and so fast, it's still like on my end. I want to make sure that I revise every single image. So Mm -hmm. I still, you know, obviously it has cut down my time of editing in like more than half. But I still want to 
pay close attention and make sure that everything looks really, really good. So right. for sure, outsourcing my images has been great. And I was really late to this. You know, I've been a wedding photographer for 11 years and I had several people on my podcast be like, you need to try outsourcing. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> and I was like, nope, nope, I don't like it. I don't do it. Yeah. And then would imagine I was like, okay, I'm finally going to give it a try because I don't have to per se train another person. It seemed like faster learning, you know, because of a computer. And when I did, it was like definitely none, like no turning back. I was like, this is it. This, I, it was worth the wait. Finally, you know, I, I can trust and my images have been, the consistency has been really, really good for me. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad that, that it's been able to help. And it is interesting whenever somebody compares it to a human, because there are a lot of simula similarities, but also a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it like, like the fact that it does learn like a human. It can do it faster. But the fact that it takes the emotion out of the edit. Absolutely. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. It lets you worry about the emotion after the core component of the photo is done. If you want to add final touches, you add final touches. So. I mean, you can, you can match the speed. That's just something that is yeah. truly <laughs> unmatchable. So that has yeah. been really, really good because even though I'm still, my turnaround for photos is still is a month. Now, even though I get my images, you know, within, you know, five days of the wedding, I'm still taking my time to making sure that everything is perfect. And, you know, sometimes I do deliver before the, the four week mark, mm -hmm. but it's still, you know, it, it gives me the, the, the headspace or the freedom of, you know, in my mind to be like, everything is taken care of. And now I'm just taking my time because, you know, I'm doing other things. And then, you know, a finalized galleries or things like that. If you are enjoying this episode, please take a moment to leave us a review at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Podchaser. We truly appreciate it. So this is fantastic. What is now one thing you do after a session that has increased business. Like, have you ever considered doing upsells after the fact? Or do you think that's I too shady? I do upsells shady? after the fact. Yes, I do upsells okay. after the fact. So it's not for me, it's not considered shady because in my contract says that there is a possibility for upsells after the fact. So client mm. kind of knows. And the upsell that I'm making is not a forced upsell, obviously. And it's something that seems organically. This happens mostly on albums, right? My collections have a certain amount of like pages on an album. And then when I, when I'm delivering, for example, let's say an image or a gallery that has 700 images and their album only has 20 pages, then a lot of images are going to be out of this album. So if I say like, hey, we can add an extra 10 spreads, will be an extra, you know, 20 pages, this will be like a more complete story. Do you guys want to proceed with that? Mm. And then it's completely up to the couple to be like, yes, we want to do this or not. We want to, you know, want to stick with what we already paid. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Any anything else that you do after a session? Because like I I kind of like gave that one to you a little Things bit, I do <laughs> you know, after, unintentionally. But I'm wondering. Well, obviously but, uh, yeah. after a session, I do a couple of you know yeah. teasers, right? So like if a, a couple doesn't have to yeah. wait four weeks to see their their images, so like a few days after, maybe two, three, you know, whenever, whenever, you know, whenever. Well, however, this comes organically. Yeah, yeah. I add a couple of images to Instagram, so like I hit a little bit on mm -hmm. social media. Obviously, nice. I repurpose those images on Pinterest. So like yes, I you know mm -hmm. I do a lot of little marketing touches throughout you know a session, and obviously after a session is completely delivered, whether it's a family session or a wedding, then comes the part of like how am I use these images to market my business because you have already served those clients right they love their images yeah. they paid your money they they moved on with their life so what do you do with those images in a way that is going to serve your business so how could i use those images to attract new clients and that comes with like blog posts which is not a blog post about the couple that i just served but a blog post about like any article any you know interesting idea that a new couple might be looking for using the images of the wedding that I just had. So a more clear example would be I recently photographed a wedding that was very colorful and she wore like a, like a rainbow dress kind of a thing. It was absolutely beautiful. So I use all those images to talk about how you can add color to your wedding and you don't have to have a white wedding if you don't want to, a, a white dress wedding if you don't want to. So I'm using the images that I use from the wedding, but I'm attracting new clients with that content. So that's something that I heavily do after a session. 
repurposing yes. content is a is a huge thing. I mean, beyond just like you know, photograph, just in general, like, you know, taking, taking a blog article and using it for here, or for there. I mean, in, in a way, a little bit behind the scenes of workflow of the workflows podcast, that's what we do, right? Mm-hmm. With the workflows podcast is we take the entire, the entire episode, we break it into little bits and pieces and we share it on different platforms in different ways. It's, it's a huge, huge benefit to repurpose content, whether it's your photographs, whether it's website copy, ad copy, you know, repurposing it all around. It's a great thing. You know, and I did notice related to, you know, sharing on Instagram and stuff like that is imagine talent photographer Michael Anthony has been doing a great job doing these fantastic behind the scenes of Mm -hmm. wedding shoots. And he's been putting these little videos together for TikTok and for Instagram reels that have been doing very well. And I feel like that's something that a lot of photographers can learn from is have your assistant document your session, ha- take some of the behind the scenes footage, mix it with the final results, these teaser mm-hmm. photos that you've now generated, right, within a couple of days, and throw together a video that's, a, you know, 20 second TikTok or, a, a, you know, one minute TikTok or an Instagram reel. You can get a lot of clients from that because that is what is hot right now. That's what's really popular with with clients these days is they're they're watching these videos. I mean, everybody loves like what's what's the word that I'm looking for? Like like a feel good story, right? So when you see yeah. also also everybody loves a transformation. So when you see kind of like the behind the scenes that you know looks normal, right? Because it's being shot with like a cell phone, and then you look the edited images mm-hmm. that look so refined and so beautiful. It's like a transformation, right? It's like yeah, your wedding is this is beautiful, but these images are gonna make them look so much you know stunning yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we've talked about now the photographic process, the business, editing after a session. Now I want you to look down at your photography business from like this 30,000 foot Mm -hmm. view down. Okay. You don't have to go into too much detail, but I'm wondering if you can share an outlined breakdown of your workflow from lead to delivery for a client. That's a a charge question, Scott. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so from booking all the way to delivery. Okay, so yeah. from booking, you know. Yeah. Obviously, contract, retainer, balance, obviously mm-hmm. emails follow up with all this information and copy of all these documents so they can, you know, archive those documents or refer to them if you need them. Along the line, I send a couple, obviously a welcome email, then a prefer vendor list, right? I like to bring my friends along so a preferred vendor list is always great <laughs> then you know we I I tell them that I am on Instagram and if they want to follow me they can so if they follow me I follow them back if they don't follow me nice. I I send an invitation they don't take it I like I don't force it on them if they follow mm-hmm. me back I do pay close attention to their stories I pay close attention to what they're posting because that's me getting to know them right So I don't get to see my couples for months and I don't want to be a stranger. So all these little Instagram stories that we think that they're silly or whatever, they really get me closer to having like a stronger bond with them the day of the wedding. And Mm. it's actually really interesting. I mean, I have a dog. I talk about my dog a lot on my Instagram stories and the (laughs) amount of times that I have come to a wedding and complete strangers come and ask about my dog is really insane. So I know it works. So anyway, so I do all these little touches. A month prior to the wedding, we do another phone call or a video call. And we talk about kind of like finalizing details. I present a timeline that they revise and then we change anything that needs to be changed. This is not a wedding timeline. This is a photography timeline. I'm not doing at what time tables get there. No, I have no idea in any of those things. I'm talking about like at what time (laughs) we're being, you know, photographed certain things. So we go over this. Mm -hmm. Then, obviously, the day of the wedding, I start the day with a cute text in the morning. Hey, happy wedding day. I always joke and I say, like, I'm alive and well. I'll be there soon. So they know that, you know, that I will show up to their wedding kind of a thing. Day of the wedding, Mm -hmm. you know, follow my timeline, have fun, be creative. I come home. The first thing that I do when I come home is save all the images in several external hard drives. So I get a little bit freaked out that I'm going to lose them. So they get saved several times. I upload them to the cloud. The next thing that I do the same night is I upload all the images, which are thousands of images, into the company that I use for calling. And I go to sleep. That's it. 
The next morning when I get my email, I mean, it doesn't take 24 hours, but, you know, I go to sleep, so I'm not paying attention. So the next morning when I wake up and I see my final calling, I go through that calling and I do a final calling myself, okay? So the first calling, let's say that is 50%, and then I narrow it down to, like, 20% of images. Mm -hmm. And once I have that done, immediately I send them to Imagine. And I wash my hands and go to sleep again. (laughs) 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 <laughs> and then obviously when I receive the images, as I mentioned before, I go through every single, you know, photo. I make any adjustments that I need to make. And then once I have that final gallery, am I, am I trying too much? Do I need to keep going down this rabbit hole? No, this is good. This is good. <laughs> okay. This is good. This is so, good. One, oh, I forgot one really good step that I think that a lot of photographers don't do. When I come home mm-hmm. after a wedding and while I'm uploading the images to my external hard drives and the cloud and all that, I send a thank you email to the couple and to all the vendors. I don't send this email at two o'clock in the morning like a crazy person, obviously not. So like I schedule <laughs> my email to be sent next morning, mm-hmm. right? And for the vendors, mm-hmm. I thank them. And I said that if the client approves a vendor gallery, that I will be sharing with them some images. And to the couple, I just say, thank you so much for having me. And I talk about their wedding, you know, like, my God, this was so great. Whatever, you know, details are. The important thing here is to thank the vendors because every single time I send this email, the majority of the times I get a reply saying like, oh my God, nobody has ever sent us a thank you email. And that for me is insane because it's like, first of all, gratitude and second of all, like so easy to make and, you know, like to be memorable just with something so little. Yeah. Okay. So Mm -hmm. back to like, I get my images or good. I upload all my images to the gallery that, you know, the software that I use to deliver my images. I create a slideshow. I create an album. And then I set up a meeting with the couple because I don't send things just via email. I do a live reveal of the gallery because I want to make sure that they're on the right Uh, mindset, uh, that the cell phones are off. And even though I don't go through the whole gallery, like on this meeting, I tell them, you know, like I show them the slideshow that I create, which is like about three minutes long, maybe. Then I walk them a little bit through the gallery. I explain them how the gallery has been divided. I tell them that I'm going to send another email with the pin. Pretty much all the logistics now of like accessing your gallery. I go over right. the album that I have designed. So now they're seeing like, oh my God, all these images are so great. And I'm like, you have 30 days to, you know, commit to this, whatever you want. And I let it be. And then a month later... I check back with them. Like, do you guys like the album? Do you guys want to proceed? What would you like to do? And at that time, if they want an album, then we go move forward with the album. And they say like, hey, everything was fantastic. The family loves the photos, whatever. At that time, I asked for a testimonial. And that's it. It's a breezy. You might have wondered why I asked that question. Right when, right before you started, you were, you were a little like, oh, that's a big question. But here's the thing. You gave so many good nuggets of of knowledge in there that were actually related to my original questions like for example like like the the instagram thing right so that helps you behind the camera Mm -hmm. but it also helps your business right looking you know getting know getting to know your client helps you in many 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 ways but also like emailing the vendor that's a big business thing right so so that's why I asked that question, and I'm, I'm so glad you, you, you know you, you, you definitely shared a lot. So I hope everybody who's listening got a lot from 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 that. It's a that little bit hesitant, so I'm like, I don't know if this is what he wants overview. from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, like it's it's interesting. Like you, you don't want to share too much when you when you propose that question because you want to leave it open for for these 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 bits of of knowledge to mm. to just come out naturally, right? That's 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 what this is it's all about so thank thank you for sharing that because that was that the whole instagram thing that in itself is a hugely valuable thing that probably you know 50 percent of photographers are not doing uh, maybe i don't know if the words is scared but they might be like ah i don't want to seem needy or i don't want to feel you know whatever so for me it's really fun because it's like organic i'm not really searching for the content they're putting out they're just putting the content out publicly on instagram and if i you know if they follow me and i follow them back then it's completely easy to reply to an an instagram story or to if they have a post about like their birthday it's really easy to be like hey happy birthday you know i i I, for me i mean i am very friendly (laughs) so for me comes easily (laughs) yeah and 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 the the whole vendor thing for example a good example like that experience that i had related to that 
is, so I don't photograph weddings, but I do a lot of families, as I mentioned. And not long ago, a family hired me to photograph their, their family with their newborn at the venue they got mm, married so the romantic. year prior. And it was a really, really great photo session. And the wedding coordinator at the venue actually, you know, gave us access to the entire grounds inside and out. And afterwards, I emailed a thank you and stuff like that. And they wound up using my photos to promote it and invited me to do it anytime with any of their clients, you know, any of their wedding clients anytime. And I was like, all right. So it, it works out to be kind to your vendors, um, whether it's a, a venue or 100%. a florist. It, and, and you would you know, think that this is kind. something that is <laughs> that a lot of people do it or that everybody's doing it. And the reality is that very few photographers are actually going the extra mile. Is it? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say pain, yes, but is it like extra work? Yes. Especially for me, because like I don't share the full gallery with vendors. I think I myself, I'm a very yeah. private person. So I put myself in the shoes of my clients. And sometimes maybe I assume things. But anyway, so like I, when I'm looking at, when I'm delivering a gallery to my clients, you know, let's say this gallery has 700 images. There is a lot of things in that gallery. There is a lot of mm -hmm. private moments. And I'm not talking about like nudity or anything like that. But there are little things that perhaps they don't want to share with the DJ, right? Does she want to have like her right. her mom helping right. her in her dress images for the DJ? Probably not. So when I send um, my gallery, then I go and I choose about 50 to 100 images that I think vendors are going to enjoy. So obviously very heavy on details. I do add a couple of romantic photos from the couple because I know perhaps the venue likes a little bit more like storytelling when they're posting things like that. And a little bit of party. So like the band or the DJ can also have like a little bit of fun images. And I send mm -hmm. that gallery first to my clients. Now it is in my contract that I have full rights of the images and that I can do whatever I want. But I don't care about that. I care about the privacy and the comfort of my clients because if they trust me, they're going to refer me. So like yeah. for me, it's better to get the right. approval of my client, even though I could be like, well, it is in my contract. That's not, that's not the way that I like to do business. So <laughs> I send it to my clients and I say, I explain right. to them. I'm like, you know, these are the images. Would you be okay with mm -hmm. me sharing these images? If there is an image within this gallery that you don't want, let me know and we remove it. Or if you just don't want to share your images, that's mm -hmm. also valid. I don't want you to feel like you have to. So it's my, yeah. my clients are always in full control of the experience. Even though I have a contract, even though I run a awesome. business, at the end of the day, for me, I yeah. want my clients to feel really, really good, to do things that feel okay to me. So like, you know, good, good energy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know, you, you never know. It could be literally something as... as uh, small as you know you wanted to share this one photo of of the couple and and the bride didn't exactly. like the way she looked in the one photo and she just wants she's okay with the 99 Correct. of them but not that last one and again one. we're assuming <laughs> right? or we see so. a photo and we're like oh this is completely okay i don't know their point of view i don't know if that's something that is really private to them i don't know as you said if she feels or she yeah. or he feel comfortable so i always like to you know again client is in full control of the experience that's it yeah yeah, great. Okay, so let's shift a little bit into something mm. very modern, futuristic. What does the future of AI in photography look like to you? I would say, to be honest, I don't like the future that much. Like, I don't like futuristic things. <laughs> but I do think that, you know... <laughs> Editing is really good. I want it to get better. So like I call more mm -hmm. time on that. I would like for like my, my the mm -hmm. calling process also to be better through AI. Right now it's good on mm -hmm. my end, but I want it to be better. So like instead of spending an extra hour, you know, checking the images, it's just like a quick, easy 10 minute walk or something like that. So I just want, you know, the right. technology to get right. obviously more accurate. I think that will be interesting. And then... Yeah, yeah. And, and that's bound to happen between just improved mm -hmm. code over time, but also more and more data. Because for AI to get better, Absolutely. it needs more data. So it's just an inevitable win is is. I can't is wait coming. for it. So you talked a little bit about this earlier in the or th and throughout this, this episode, but how did Imagine impact your life? 
not just business. So it could be whatever you want to talk about. Now I have How a lot of free time, to be honest. So I can, you know, I, I, I don't feel the pressure when, you know, especially during high season, right? We have those weddings back to back to back. And mm. it's like, oh, my God, am I going to be able to edit all this? So now I don't have that pressure because now I know for sure that within three days of me finishing a wedding, I'm sending those images, Right. And then instead of having to edit for, you know, two, three weeks, now I can sit, you know, if I, if I sit, we talk about this in our, in my podcast when you were a guest, if I sit and I really focus and I'm not like mm-hmm. doing 20 other things at the same time, I can get a wedding done really easily. So for me, that has left a lot of like pressure yeah. off my plate. What can I do if I feel more relaxed? I can focus. I mean, I'm obsessed with marketing. So like I can focus on the marketing efforts that I need to do instead of thinking about like I need to edit 10 weddings now I'm like okay I need to just revise 10 weddings and then focus the rest of the time Mm. on you know my marketing or going out or riding my bicycle or as you all know watching tv because I love my tv shows so (laughs) I have more time for that but I think (laughs) overall it's just the pressure of am I going to be able to deliver my images on time to my clients that for me has been the biggest thing awesome i'm i'm glad that we're able to give you time to go <laughs> ride your bicycle and 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 other fun things riding a bicycle in miami depending on how high the humidity is Lisa, i don't know if i'd want to do mean, it but i'm you glad have to that... wait until the sun sets because <laughs> nobody's riding a freaking bicycle here yeah. doing this. although sometimes when i go to the beach i don't care the time i just go on you know but i love riding a bicycle it's like a like a fun yeah. experience <laughs> well when you when you're when you're on the beach, you know, like uh, exactly, on the beach and riding yeah. there, at least you get the breeze from the ocean coming. That's a little more, a little more, a little more bearable. We get the same humidity here. We don't, but the heat's a little. You know bit, what you, we get here that is really like, annoying because li- it's like bit. now it's like it's like sunset is down, so now it's like pretty out. But you're riding your bicycle and you're eating bugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All those like, little gnats and stuff. Of, oh, you yeah. know, bugs. Yeah. But hey, you know. It's an experience. Yeah. yeah. Especially at the beach, too. I find mm. that there's a lot of, like, beach gnats or whatever those bugs are that are always... I mean, at least here in New Jersey, there's always those yes, beach gnats absolutely. at night. But, you know, so... So, Carolina, I'm so glad you're able to 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 join me today and talk about all your different workflows, share, all, like, as I said, all these little juicy nuggets of uh, knowledge. Where can our listeners learn, learn more about you, connect with you, and of course, see your incredible photography awesome. and well, listen so to your Well, so my photography podcast. people can find me on Carolina Gusick on Instagram. People can go check it out. If people want to learn about marketing, they can follow me on the Talk Republic. That is T-O-G Republic. And as you mentioned, I do have a po- podcast. Every week I release either an interview or a solo episode with actionable marketing tips for photographers. Awesome. Thank you. I'll be sure to link to both of those websites in the show notes. Thank you for um, having me. Thank you again, Carolina. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you so much, Carolina, for joining me today on the podcast. I am so impressed with all of the workflows that you have in place. All those, as I said, those juicy nuggets of knowledge that you shared throughout the show. I really appreciate you taking the time to share all this with me and with the Imagine community. Thank you so much, and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. You have been listening to Workflows, presented by Imagine. To hear more from Workflows and to find a link to our guest, please go to imagine-ai.com slash podcast. Be a part of the conversation by joining the Imagine community at imagine-ai.com slash community. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.